everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and welcome to my media channel. If this is your first time here and you happen to like this video, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification for notifications of more content in the future. Now then, I want to talk about a product that I got recently that I am personally very, very excited about. Now, I don't know if you've been watching my channel for very long, if you're new here, you probably haven't, but Masoni Koku is, in my opinion, one of the best series ever. I think Masoni Koku is probably in my top 10 list of favorite shows that I would watch over and over again. It was written by Rumiko Takahashi, who wrote Ron Mahath and Inuyasha. And, you know, she's just a really, really talented writer. Uh, unfortunately, I think her crowning achievement is Masoni Koku. And Masoni Koku has not been made available for a very long time. In fact, the TV series has been out of print for years. And yes, I am deliberately holding up the final season on DVD to visually make any people who are familiar with Mason Koku extremely jealous that I have this and I have it in such great condition. Also, they published the manga, which is also out of print. These products are very, very cherished and I have watched this show a few times, and I have read this many, many times. Well, for those who miss the boat, so to speak, and have wanted to find out what Masoni Koku is about after so many years, they are in luck because Viz Media has reclaimed, at the very least, the manga of Masoni Koku and are releasing it in new paperbacks, a new signature edition, I believe it, that's what's called the signature edition of Mason Ikoku. And I want to take a few minutes to talk about it. Now these books are not exactly cheap. They're $25 each retail price. Although if you go to Write Stuff International or even barnesandnoble.com, you can get them a heck of a lot cheaper. And this, this media has taken this opportunity to basically reintroduce Mason Ikoku to a new audience. Now, the funny thing about the history is that Viz Media has had a long history with Masoni Koku, but it's never been a particularly successful one. I've kind of always sensed that Viz Media continues to deal with the property because it has personal meaning to them more than financial um, gains. For example, when they first started releasing the anime back in the VHS days, I think they got up to episode... 36 before they discontinued it on VHS. Then they tried releasing the manga in 32 page issues. That never completed its run. Uh, they did finally release the TV show on DVD, but it sold poorly. And in fact, um, volumes four through eight were sold exclusively on Right Stuff International. And in fact, they were selling so poorly by the end of the run that I think there's only a couple thousand copies of this season out there, which is why it's so expensive and hard to find. Uh, I think their re-release of the manga did a little bit better, and they did finish the series, but once they went out of print, there was the sense that it would never come back, that maybe this series, despite the quality, was too 80s, it was too Japanese, like, you know... Yeah, Rumiko Takahashi has a name, but maybe people in the States like her better when she's being slapped, doing a slapstick gender bender comedy or a feudal fairy tale. They don't want to see slice of life um, manga. And yet, here we have it. The Viz Signature Edition of Meisani Koku. It's 2020. One of the few nice things about 2020. It doesn't... Celebrate an anniversary. It has no Inuyasha sticker on it. Uh, probably because, you know, Inuyasha is not the thing it used to be anymore. And I look at this and it's like, you know, it's kind of amazing that it's here. Like, I definitely get the sense that someone at Viz Media feels this is an important title. And they want to keep it out in print. And they're going to do it even if it's you know, financially, maybe not as viable as other titles. Now, my mini review comes like, if you have this, should you replace it with this? And that's going to be complicated to answer. Uh, first, the pros. 
it is a bigger copy than this. It doesn't really look like it, but when you put it stuff next together, you can see it is bigger. Now, it's not a whole lot bigger, but it's bigger enough so the artwork is noticeably more appreciable. It does lack a lot of bells and whistles, though. Aside from the first, like, page or two that have color pages, there's no color pages on pages that are clearly supposed to be colored. Uh, it appears to be the exact same translation as before. And as you can kind of see from the side, it's not a whole lot bigger. So it's not like you're getting a two for one deal. You're getting more like one and a tenth um, of the original series. So if you are buying less books this time around than you were this time around, you're probably only going to buy one book less. I, I think this will wrap up in 14 books, whereas with this edition, it was 15. So, it's not that much of an upgrade, if we're being completely honest. That said, I do like the quality of the paper. I think the paper is of higher quality than this one. The bigger artwork, even if it's not that much bigger, does make a difference. And I personally am going to be rebuying them, even without the bells and whistles, because it's like, you know what, I really do love this series. And I do want to support it. Now, am I saying if this sells enough, will Viz Media give the anime a second look? That's hard to say. The anime is clearly more expensive. And the anime was by far a bigger financial loss. Now, here's the thing. I don't know how successful this was, but, you know, with this, you have to just pay some translators and for the paper. That's all. So it's much easier to break even on a book. On a TV show, you gotta, you know, dub the voices, you have to press the discs, and I, I don't know if this could be financially feasible even in today's market. There is a Blu-ray transfer in Japan that I would love to see come over here, and maybe if they did it smartly and did it in two overpriced sets, maybe they could do it that way, but I don't know. I don't know if this selling a lot would equate to this coming back. But let's now skip if you are a Masonic Koku fan. Let's say you already have the entire series. You don't necessarily need it again. Whether or not you want to upgrade or not or buy this new edition, that's entirely up to you. Now, if you have never read it before, this is a great time to do it. Yes, it will cost a little bit more money than your typical manga. In fact, I think that explains why they're doing it in a signature edition the way they are. They want to bring it back, but they know that it has a limited audience. Therefore, they're charging $15 more for it than they would most other series. That's just kind of how this works. They're going to charge more, and I think they're hoping that that niche audience does rebuy it, and then maybe there's enough new people to justify the expense. But if you've never read it before, this is a wonderful title about um, a... A Japanese student named Godai who lives in a inn called Masani Koku and you know he has crummy roommates they're always interrupting his studying and he's gonna leave like I can't take living here anymore and then the beautiful Kyoko shows up and she is the new apartment complex manager and he is smitten with her and decides to stay and try to win her heart very very basic setup but from that basic setup comes something that's that really is quite moving and touching. He kind of goes on and he thinks, you think he's going to like, you know, go and he's going to impress her. and But it ends up being a lot more complicated than that. She ends up being a widow. And she was married before. And unfortunately, her husband died so early into their marriage that he was basically never able to be, you know, blemished at all. He was the perfect husband the entire time. And how does one compete with a perfect dead husband? And what happens is the series spends several years following these people. They date other people. You see their relationship develop. You see the insecurities on both sides get in the way. And I, I, I'm not going to give away the ending, obviously. But Rumiko Takahashi has a reputation for ending series poorly. 
the ending to Ron Mahath is not very good. And some people were not happy with the ending of Inuyasha. You know, that's fine. It happens. I think she nailed the, the landing on this one. And in fact, this is... I think this should be studied for how you end a series properly and how you bring it all together and how you create a emotional, satisfying conclusion for everyone. I... I truly believe that. they. I cry a little every time I read the ending. I'm not going to lie. So if you've never read it, I highly recommend it. Now I will give a little asterisk. It, it is a little slow to start. In fact, I dare I say it, this... I mean, the book only starts getting interesting near the end. It's funny, it's, it's not bad, but only in book two, once that comes out, will it start really getting interesting and you can really start seeing what Takahashi is trying to do. So I don't know what the circumstance was that brought this back. I don't know if good sales of this will result in the TV show coming back. I mean, maybe it could at least come to streaming. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really good one. And if you haven't read it, highly recommend it. It will cost a little bit more money, um, and I don't know if it's worth upgrading that much, unless your old collection is just super worn. I'm rebuying it because I like the bigger artwork, and, um, uh, well, interestingly, I did sell some of my older books because I was, you know, several years ago caught in a financial bind, and they were worth a lot of money, so I, I sold them. It was actually kind of interesting that I was able to sell them. For as much as I did, considering Right Stuff International and other bookstores still have copies of the original manga and they've been out of print for years, so you know, that shows what a big seller it actually was. But I do applaud Viz for keeping their commitment to this series. Um, I don't think anyone else would really want to touch it. It's just, it's old. Takahashi's name is not the household name it once was with anime fans. You know, maybe it, they just feel this is a part of their history, so they got to kind of keep it around as long as they can. I don't know, but uh but yeah, overall this is a very very solid book and you know, if I wasn't comparing it to the old book, I mean this is easily an A. This is an A release. And even if I'm comparing it, it's still an A release because you know what? I mean, yeah, it might be the same translation and roughly the same content, but you know, it is a better book overall. I mean, it better paper, bigger size. So, you know, anyway, that's my little mini review and discussion of Meisari Koku, the signature edition from Viz Media. Now, my question to you is, did you get this? Are you going to get it? And were you a part of the original release? And do you have the entire release? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, blame responsibly. Have a good one.